reading of Matthew 21, 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee.
Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday Worship at North Springfield Church. If you're here in person, please make sure your phone is silenced or turned off. If you're watching at home, have some juice and a cracker at hand so you can join us for in communion. Your bulletin has information on the one great hour of sharing. Please put your envelope or fish bank in the offering plate today, or you can bring it next week. And don't forget Maundy Thursday at Goodyear Heights Presbyterian Church. At 7 o'clock. I wasn't sure of the time, sorry. (laughs) At 7 o'clock. Choir members, you're expected there at 6.30. And also, don't forget to sign up for the breakfast for Easter Sunday morning. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex. If able, please stand. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. We lay our long branches in anticipation. We lay our love before him to cushion his walk. God's steadfast love endures forever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Our prayer of the day. God of righteousness, whose steadfast love offers direction and purpose to our lives, we await you at the gates of your holy sanctuary. With our palm leaves waving, we greet you as ruler of our lives. We thank you for this wonderful moment. Grant us strength and courage as we leave this place and enter into this holy week, eager to participate in a world transformed by love. Guide our thoughts and actions so we may be, appreciate the possibilities in every day. We trust in you, O God. Let your face shine on your servants. Amen. 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 Let us join together in a reading of part of Psalm 118, which is written in your bulletin. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. Which is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone stone that the builders rejected has become the chief. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us life. Bind the vessel procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever.
We are so blessed, are we not? All right. We come to the font to remember that the font connects our confession of sin, the grace and cleansing of our baptism, and with our baptismal call every day to new life in Christ. <coughs> One day, we are crying to God, save us. The next, we are turning our backs on God and walking away. Despite our fickle nature, God is steadfast in loving us and constant in forgiving us. Let us confess to our God. With joy in our hearts, we welcome your servant, O God, only to reject him when he picks up a cross instead of a crown. By the call of laying on the ground before Jesus, we pick up our faith, dust it off, and put it back in the closet until we need it. We can be as stubborn and rebellious as the city which cheers your name. Save us, redeeming God. May we lay our doubts, our fears, our worries, our weariness at your feet, trusting and believing that you will forgive what is sinful. Make our whole our brokenness and welcome us as sisters and brothers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us take this time of silence for personal reflection and confession. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the declaration of forgiveness. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in God's name, not to judge us, but to save us. Jesus walks with us on the way of faithfulness, empowering us to become the disciples we are called to be. In Christ, we are forgiven. We humble ourselves in gratitude to God. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please turn to one another with words and gestures of peace and reconciliation. For those of you at home, the peace of Christ be with you. Our prayer of illumination. Holy God, waken our ears to hear your voice. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to understand and receive the testimony of Scripture. Teach us to listen and not turn backward. Speak to us through your love that we may be strengthened to have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. 
I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare, who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading of Matthew's Passion Narrative, Matthew 27, 11 to 26. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water, and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified.
Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they called upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled, compelled this man to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. You who would destroy the temple, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now. <clears throat> For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice, and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
as much as we're all drawn to the flashy and the expensive, we're also drawn to the humble and the common. To know that someone is common, that is, an everyday person without affectations, like one of us, yet not mediocre, a person we can identify with and yet still view with respect or love, grabs our attention. In this world where facades and personas are bought and sold by fakes and frauds and con artists, and where, if we're honest, we're not always what we present ourselves to be, genuinely humble people can grab our attention. We trust those who seem sincerely humble because they're not trying to get something from us. They won't try to tear us down to build themselves up. They don't need our admiration to add to their self-awareness or to their self-esteem. Jesus called himself mild, gentle, unassuming, considerate, in control of himself. The old English word used was meek. But in modern English, meek doesn't communicate at all the great strength of Jesus that was expressed in his humility. Jesus had nothing to prove for his own sake. He wasn't carrying around a bunch of personal baggage. Counselors would say that his personal issues were settled. He didn't seek the limelight for his own sake. He did everything for God and for others. What an inexplicable person. He went around saying that God was bringing about heaven's government, God's own realm, on earth through him. Which sounds like either arrogance or a mental illness. Yet, he spent the rest of his earthly life genuinely and sacrificially caring for others. We can see, can't we, why he grabbed people's attention, why people flocked to him. <clears throat> Obviously, there is such a thing as false humility. Danish philosopher and theologian Soren Kierkegaard said, most learned discussions of humility aren't. There's false meekness as people try to twist our emotions to earn undeserved pity. Oh, that's all right. You go and have a, have a good time. I'll, I'll be fine just sitting here all by myself. Now, Jesus didn't try to control people. He didn't psychologically maneuver or manipulate them, just making them feel guilty enough to give in to him. He was the kind of person others naturally trusted. Let's think about those several pre-approved credit card applications we got in the, in the mail this last month or so. If we read the letters with them, they're glowing in their stated admiration of us and our good credit rating. Here in gratitude for the wonder, per, wonderful person that you are is a credit card. Oh yeah, and by the way, the interest rate is 31%. <laughs> Jesus had others' best interests at heart, and they they knew it, even if they didn't always understand him. He was and he is genuinely, authentically present as one who loves us. The 19th century Russian author Leo Tolstoy lived at the time when the feudal system of serfdom was ending. All his life, he was haunted by the plight of the serfs and spent much of his time, energy, and money trying to help the newly emancipated serfs. In one of his earlier attempts to help the peasants on his ancestral estate, he lived, ate, and worked with, uh, along with them for a while. But he was confounded when one of them told, them that, told him that they didn't really take him seriously. They considered his behavior to be a performance a rich person's lark. They knew, as did he, that he could go home anytime. And he could enjoy his father's mansion. He could sleep on a soft mattress and eat wonderful and delicious meals. 
They didn't consider him to actually be one of them. To them, he was a farce. To them, he was just play-acting, pretending to live a life that they actually lived. Today, Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a young donkey. He arrives deliberately in a humble way. It's hard for us, however, to figure out why Jesus would arrange a parade in which he was the only entry. Was this a mere public relations stunt? Was he just pretending to be one of us? Through the centuries, a lot of people, uh, those who hold a lower opinion of human existence than God does, have been horrified at the Christian belief of God's becoming one of us. They reason that if God were to enter human life, God would somehow be diminished, made something less than divine. However, the scriptures clearly say Jesus didn't disguise himself as a servant. It wasn't an act. It was real. Jesus felt what we feel, thought our thoughts, endured our pain, was tempted by our temptation. This doesn't diminish God. It shows us how truly great God is by showing us how much concern and care and love that God has for us. It was Gandhi who said, Service which is rendered without joy helps neither the servant nor the served. But all other pleasures and possessions pale into nothingness before service which is rendered in a spirit of joy. Have you ever come across the photograph of Gandhi's worldly possessions? I have a picture. I know you can't see it. (laughs) I'll tell you what's in it. I see a couple of pairs of sandals, a pocket watch, a diary, and a a Bible and glasses. Mm, A couple things here, a spittoon, a letter opener, a a fork and a spoon, two wooden bowls, and three monkeys who see no evil, hear no evil, and say no evil. Mm -hmm. That's it. And you know, it was the same with Jesus. Jesus essentially had no possessions. He'd given everything up to joyfully serve. And it was Jesus' life of joyful service and nonviolent disobedience which deeply affected Gandhi and was the pattern by which Gandhi modeled his own life. Jesus poured out his life for us. And Jesus' method is God's method. Jesus compels our hearts by loving us and serving us. You know, some people can be compared to a a mock storefront, like in the old spaghetti westerns. Yes, I'm that old. (laughs) You remember spaghetti westerns? Yeah. Okay, so the mock storefront with its huge facade and just an ordinary or less than ordinary little building hidden behind it. But Jesus was the opposite. An ordinary human being backed by all the power of the universe. But he freely gave up his power. The poured out life of the servant Jesus wasn't a temporary performance like Tolstoy rubbing shoulders with his serfs. Jesus didn't sneak out of genuine human suffering. Yes, he said he could have called 12 divisions of angels to his rescue. The thing is, he he could have, but he did not. Jesus, through humbling himself even to his death, holds humanity together with God and brings us from death to life. The genuinely humble Jesus grabs our attention. We are awed by the common identity that he willingly shares with us. He died as a servant. And as our Philippians reading says, God has highly exalted him, proving that selfless love governs the universe. 
the servant who was always concerned about our well-being, is now our Lord. After Jesus' death and resurrection, we see what was truly behind his life. We see that the way he lived not only demonstrates God's nature, but it shows us how God created us to live. I'm going to say that again. We see that the way that he lived not only demonstrates God's nature, but it shows us how God created all of us to live. Now we understand why Paul would tell his friends at Philippi, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And so the heart of God is revealed. The divinity of Jesus is somehow inextricably linked with his willingness to empty himself, with his radical humility, and with his ready willingness to identify with the least of these. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the humble ways of our Lord Jesus rule our lives. And may we honor him by all that we do and how we do it. May we as the church universal and as the faith community of North Springfield Church be united and harmonious in our work as we testify to the world about what it means to be conformed to Christ and empowered to do God's will, even unto death. Amen. Now let us stand and say what we believe using our affirmation of faith, which is in your bulletin, Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Please be seated. Gathered by the Spirit, let us return to the Lord our God and pray for the church, the world, and all who yearn for new life. O eternal one, shrouded in mystery, yet revealed in Jesus, awesome in power, yet preferring to relate to us in gentleness, capable of commanding, yet preferring to win us with love, we can but bow in awe, in wonder, in adoration, and in praise to you who are from age to age and into all of the ages. We thank you for that humble ride Jesus took into Jerusalem. Like those people who greeted him that day, we wish to make him fit into our preconceptions. They were wishing for a conqueror. Instead, he came as a gentle peacemaker. We would wish him to remove all sin and darkness from life. Instead, he offers us forgiveness. We would wish him to remove life's obstacles and sufferings. Instead, he offers us his presence in trial. Be with us today. May we be open to this life-changing Jesus. Cause us to be receptive of heart as we lean into this holy week. Lead us to understand that most difficult virtue of humility. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us grace to live now in your community of love, 
where children are cared for, elders are valued, and no one is left out. Grant us wisdom to choose leaders. Help us to follow those who love your goodness. Grant us healing that wars may cease, that violence and hate may be driven from the earth. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort, support, and sustain <clears throat> the citizens, the leaders, and the soldiers of Ukraine as they defend their land and people from Russian aggressors. Merciful God, bring peace to our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us compassion to visit the lonely and to help those who wait for justice. Be with those who are confronting life-changing situations. Be with those who have drunk the bitter cup of grief. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort and support those impacted by the mass shooting in the Presbyterian Church in America, church school in Nashville. <clears throat> the, the recent tornadoes in the South and the Midwest, the flooding in California, the earthquakes in Syria and Turkey, the train derailment in East Palestine. Comfort the sick and be with those with chronic and debilitating addiction or illness. Especially we ask your blessing upon those in the prayer list of North Springfield Church for Denny and Terry and Lorna, for Kim and Jill, and for all those we now name in our hearts, either silently or aloud. Be to all of these a powerful presence. Bind up their wounds and grant them wholeness and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lift our eyes and hearts to Jesus, who knows our fears and sorrows, and will lift us all to you. We join your people everywhere in his song of praise. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Almighty God, hear these prayers of your people and grant us all that we need for the sake of the one in whose name we pray, even Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us sing together the Lord's Prayer. Let our hosannas to the one who brings liberation take form in our tithes and offerings.
us pray together. May these gifts and our lives bear fruit in many good works, increasing among all people knowledge of God, patience and endurance, wisdom and understanding, love and joy. Thankful for the mercy you have shown us, we pledge ourselves and these offerings to extend mercy to all. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you our thanks and praise. On this day of celebration, on this day of renewing our faith, on this day, of walking with the Christ to Jerusalem and beyond. We give you thanks, great and loving God. Thank you, loving God. From the beginning, you have loved us. You created all that is, calling it into being. With the Spirit and the Word, you saw what you had created and called it good. Thank you, loving God. Yet time and time again, we have turned away from your love and your hope. But you never left us to walk by ourselves. Even when we turn away, you walk the road with us. Through prophets, priests, and storytellers, you called us back to your love. Thank you, loving God. There came a time when you sent Jesus to speak to the world, to speak to us, to teach us your love, to give abundant life, to make us new. Thank you, loving God. He lives a life as one of us, a child, a youth, an adult. He laughed with those who laughed. He cried with those who cried. In all of this, he walked the way of the cross. By his suffering and death, he freed us from sin and death. Risen from the grave, he leads us to the joy of new life. Thank you, loving God. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Thank, Thank you, you, loving God. God. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup, that for us they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name. Lead us, O God, in the way of Christ. Give us courage to take up our cross and follow him. Help us to love you above all else and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until, with the redeemed of all ages, we feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Holy God, we give you thanks to the Lord Jesus on the night before he died, took bread, and after giving thank to, thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. The blood of Christ, which is for you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. God, our help and strength, you have satisfied our hunger and our thirst with this bread and cup. Strengthen our faith that through the death and resurrection of your Son we may be led to salvation, for he is Lord now and forever. Amen. Go now in peace, mindful of the profound nature of this holy week. Go beyond the joyful parade of the palms and follow Jesus into the suffering of this world, mindful that he was obedient to God, even to the cross. And may you know the love of, cross, of Christ, the mercy of the Father, and the fire of the Holy Spirit as you go with the one God, who is mother and father of us all.
and the people of Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.